There are many times in programming where we are unhappy with the result we have achieved. Our program is too slow. And, you know, sometimes you really don't want to do the work to optimize the program, or maybe you have optimized it um, and you've sort of gotten stuck. It doesn't seem like it would be easy to make it go faster. You might wish, hey, what if I could just make the computer go faster? Well, wouldn't that be a solution? And most of the time, obviously, you can't do that because you can't just change your computer or, you know, you're writing a program, so it has to be good on the person's computer that you um, ship for. But in my case, for my operating system, I recently actually had this situation occur where things were, were slow and I was doing the calculation of how slow should they be versus how fast, how slow should they be, you know, based on the specs on the box. And um, I came to the conclusion that no, actually, I think the operating system, or I think I was misconfiguring the um, the CPU clock speed for the S Serena machine that I shipped to people. And uh, so I, I had to browse through the manual, and it turns out, yes, indeed, I was uh, not configuring the CPU clock speed. And the CPU default clock speed is about half that itch of, um, of what the machine is actually capable for. So I added this code here. It wasn't that complicated at all. It took a little bit of figuring out, but um, because I'm used to the machine by now, this was actually pretty trivial. And we basically go in and just say, hey, I want to dynamically increase. It turns out it was actually really easy. You just set a different multiplier and then the you change what the CPU is like boosting up to in terms of clock speed. Um, and I also changed the DDR speed, which is the speed of the uh, memory. But that was already I think because the bootloader queries the memory, I think, while setting it up, this was actually configured um, at a quite high rate. So I only managed to bump that a little bit. And this says 1920 megahertz here. I think by the nature of DDR, the, the real, say, on the packaging um, speed would be half this because it's double data rate, right? So I think the controller actually runs at twice the speed which would, you know, give us, um, you know, 960, which this is DDR3, so we don't, this is a way more reasonable number than two gigahertz. Anyway, I will, let's take a look at the speed difference that's made to a compile of the new shell on my operating system. Here we go, on the top left, we have the debug build with the old clock speed. In the bottom right, or bottom left, sorry, we have the old clock speed with the release build. And then on the right side, we have the same thing, but for the new clock speeds. So debug on top, release on bottom, new clock speeds on the right. And we can see here now that the release build will win actually in both cases. That's expected because we don't do it that much extra number crunching. We actually just don't emit lots of debug info which me makes it faster. Um, we can also see that it, it's quite a substantial win, uh, certainly for you know an afternoon of uh, effort and figuring stuff out. This is clearly an, an obvious win to have made these speed improvements. But there is a problem, which is that, and this happened before actually, um, but when when these these speed improvements happen they can sometimes reveal bugs or timing things um that otherwise were undetected or less detected in this case um i have um, problems in my video code and specifically the lack of uh interrupts for vsync that is causing problems with vsync Here we can see um, a recording of this issue. 
So I'm uh, on the OS now, and um, I'm going to start up the uh, Pong game, which runs an exclusive full screen. And that means that it uh, sends output to the uh, graphics card directly. We can see here that there's this flickering issue, which arises from um, the fact that the frame time is now less than 10 milliseconds, or it's about 10 milliseconds, which I think is revealing this problem because uh, now, so the program is not dropping any frames, but because there are only two frame buffers, one that gets drawn and one that gets presented, there's a timing issue where for some reason the scan out is scanning out the, the buffer that is being drawn to. And so we get this flickering issue. Definitely something I need to fix, but probably it'll be fixed to the next release as in release seven, not release six, which I'm trying to get out this uh, next month or at the end of the month.